officially live. We're not live yet. Live. Uh, what's up, peoples? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, very special, very special weekend live uh, from me. It is 8.02 a.m. Uh, Pacific time and 11 a.m. East Coast time. And we are about to talk about play. <laughs> and I <laughs> am excited to talk to all of you if you're up. Uh, so if you are up and seeing this, uh, make sure to hit those hearts so that we know that you're there. Where are you from? Um, or you may just check this on the replay, which is even cooler. So uh, we are going to go live in five, four, three, two, one. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this. Uh, it was almost like Christmas time, Dr. Marcy. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I knew I was going to talk to you this morning. And I was like, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. Um, and so... It's a good it's time. A, it is a good time. Uh, it is a great, uh, great Saturday. Today's Saturday, by the way. Today's Saturday. That All is day the actual, long. actual day. And the actual date is the 25th of April. Um, uh, our quarantine date is is i don't know i, I wish well, I yours might be different than ours ours in new york is may 15th as of right now but we don't know what's gonna happen next yes and so today we are going to be talking about play um uh because as the person who in his business name has the word play and he likes to consider himself playful af um uh, a lot of adults um, are quarantined with their children and they're like, WTF. Yeah. Uh, and so I brought my good friend, she's this way, uh, Dr. Marcy Beagle um, on so we could have a discussion. So before we talk about how we got to this topic, I would like you to introduce yourself because Great. you are an amazing person and you you deserve it. So please, Dr. Marcy. Thank you. Um, so when people, I was on a summit last night and when people read my bio out, I'm like, wow, that chick, she did some good things. Like it just, um, I sometimes forget because I'm also a human and I'm, you know, quarantined like everyone else in my house doing what we're doing that I'm like, oh yeah, I've done some really good things in my life that I'm really proud of. So um, I've been a behaviorist for over 20 years. Most of my career has been in the world of education and families, really working with children with behavior challenges. I started out working with children who have autism and learned about behavior for them. And then realized that the rules that I was taught for children with autism are the rules of how behavior works for everybody. And I'm a big believer that if we give parents the tools that things move faster and better and quicker to have happy homes, if we give educators understanding of how behavior works, classrooms are smoother. And then in the last few years, I have learned that if you give businesses the tools of how business works, employees are happier, sales are better, all of that good stuff happens. So sort of like how we behave in one place, we behave everywhere. And that's really what, what I do in the world. I have two books that I have published. One is called Love Your Family Again, which magically is people are buying. Um, right now, I like keep getting notices from Amazon. I love that. Thank you. If you have purchased it, amazing. And I also have Love Your Classroom Again, which I'm getting notes from schools. I just, a friend just emailed me and said that um, his wife convinced his school to buy 30 copies of the book. And I was like, amazing. Um, so I've been on national television. I speak internationally, all of that really fun stuff. I think my favorite was when I spoke for the Royal Australian Navy, where that kind of tripped into that. Um, but my goal really is realistic, action-based tools that you can go put in place now. And part of why I'm so excited to be here with you, Gary, is that the idea that when people get off this call, or let's face it, if you're a parent while you're on this call, that you can turn around and do something different to engage, to have more fun with your kids, to enjoy what's happening for moments yes. right now while we're all spending so much time together. Like that is my dream. That is my wish. And I'm pretty, pretty confident that between you and me, we can get some tools into people's hands to make today and tomorrow and the next day even better. Yes. And on top of that, uh, I have a three-year-old, uh, my son, Garrett. Uh, he is currently sleeping. Uh, wow. But he, 
yeah, he, he's currently sleeping. Uh, he may wake up and come in. Um, you know, he, he's on his own schedule right now. And it's interesting because he's currently sleeping because he did wake up at like, I don't know, six and he got out of his bed and then he came into our bed and I was like, uh, I'm not fully awake yet. I'll be up right. in a moment. And then he's like, okay. And then he like went back to sleep. So, um, I don't know. We, we should see a Saturday morning. Uh, but the one thing that, uh, Dr. Marcy left out, um, and she's very modest about this. Tell them about your parents. Can you please, can you please tell oh, them about your parents? Well, see, I don't think of my parents as a credential because they kind of, you know, I, I didn't really choose it. My, <laughs> well, and Gary, I'll add something that you might not know about my family or about me. Uh, okay. All right, so cool. both of my parents are clowns. Um, before COVID-19 and quarantine, they clowned in, in hospitals um, every month. They, um, they clown in parades, they do birthday parties, they do fundraisers, um, they do juvenile diabetes fundraiser every year, all sorts of really, really wonderful things. So it has been an adventure to grow up with clown. Um, my dad was always a clown. My mom became a clown when I was um, in graduate school. So, you know, a little later in my life, but it, it was always really a delight uh, to be around that. My sister is a balloon twister. I mean, she's also a, <laughs> a computer programmer and white writes voice recognition software for a reading program. She's brilliant, but she is a balloon twister and has some, made some really, really amazing, amazing things. She did a balloon arch on the 50 yard line for an autism speaks um, walkathon, like really, really, really cool stuff. Um, and I have been known to fly in the trapeze. So uh, you told me about the trapeze. You, you admitted that. So I, okay. I, I, I didn't know if you, if you knew that piece. So yeah. Uh, but like I like I said, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, mm -hmm. um, and we have to give props uh, to the whole Beagle family because um, you know they helped you. So, anyways, about this this um, this topic of of helping parents uh, be able to better play with their kids and give them yes. support during this quarantine time, um, I think it's important to figure out how. Um, you know, how this came about. And then before we do that, um, I'd like to acknowledge all of you who are watching, especially um, a mutual friend of ours. You just left a comment on LinkedIn, uh, <gasps> Isaac. Isaac, Hi, Warren. Isaac. He, we got to get him to come on as well uh, because he is super rad. <gasps> um, and on yep. Facebook, my cousin James is here. Yep. I, yep. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt about Isaac because, you know, we need to give Isaac all of his space, but I just hit the live comments. And on Facebook, my cousin James is here. Hello! Yes, I know. So everyone is here. We are talking about play today. Um, you know, this is just one of the things. Um, and so, Marcy, yes. let's talk about how we got to this topic. Because we were saying that um we That's should do fair. something we haven't this is the first time that we are done something live and we were yes. brainstorming and and i i can't tell it without laughing but please uh actually no i will tell I mean, the I story tell the story and i can just use props yes and so so yeah, my son, for you to share the story all right cool so my son uh my son garrett uh popped on and uh um, as we're brainstorming about what as, we could talk about Yes, and Dr. Marcy mentioned um, about how uh, she was doing this virtual birthday party, and she had birthday hats. Her because, health, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and she had a birthday hat, and then so she just demonstrated what it was like, um, and she put a birthday hat on. My son's eyes immediately lit up, and he was right. like, what? And then while we're having this conversation, this is why I feel like you have a little bit of clown in you. Like, it, it's I mean, in the DNA. Uh, Dr. Marcy... Uh, continued to put hats on, um, you know, as we're having this conversation, you know, and, and my son is just mesmerized. He's like, what? Um, and as you can see here, this is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Like, it's like this, like little spiky thing. And we're just talking and Garrett is like, huh? Huh? and he's, you know, part of the conversation because, you know, during this quarantine time, that's just how it gets down. Uh, you know, kids just jump in and, and we just keep it going like that. And then before long, uh, Dr. Marcy had this beautiful little headdress of birthday hats. I'm working on it. And she's getting there. And 
And this was so cool. And Garrett was just like, what is going on here? Like it was a magic trick. And granted, he's three. Let me let me just start by saying that. And is that the last one? Or is that the it's next the last one? So that was the that was the punchline of the joke in that she had one more and it made more sense to put it on her head. Because you can't have just one birthday hat sitting around. That would just be ridiculous. Yes. And it just made more sense to put it on her head than to leave it there. And then we were like, that is it. We need to talk about play and play with adults. Also like a five minute exchange in which he just, I just kept saying random things and putting hats on my head and he size just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was this reminder that like play doesn't have to be planned. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be anything specific. I don't, I, I think I could have put like pens on my head and he would have been, you know, just as excited. Yep. And it was so, more, yeah. That was it. And so then we said, all right, you know, these parents out there um, probably need some support on like, hey, how can I continue to amuse my kids? How can I continue to be an engaged parent and also, you know, be responsible, be a professional, do all these things. And for me, I come from the world of improvisation and I've been uh, improvising, you know, uh, I would like to say professionally, but we don't, as improvisers, we really don't get paid. Uh, so I have been, <laughs> I've been improvising for about a decade. But if you ask my mom, she would say you, I've been making crap up for the last 40 years. So wait, but is being paid the measure of being a professional? Cause I'm, uh, I, I don't know what if is, that's really the, the ball what is, what, what is uh, the measure of being a professional? And it's interesting because then that joke, is not even funny anymore, but I would still, like, we're still having a conversation here. So, so Dr. Marcy, please. I mean, I think that there are a lot of things in the world that you can do kind of professionally that is a, um, that you do because you love it, where you volunteer, where kind of the, the culture of it is that it is, you show up and you just give it away. Um, but you know, is it the like 20,000 hours that makes you an expert, makes you a professional? Is it the dedication and the, you know, there are certain things that I'm like, I am a professional at eating ice cream yet. No one's ever really paid me to do that, but I have been practicing that my whole life. Right? So I'm not sure if it's a, a standard of acknowledgement from the community, a personal declaration and amount of time. Um, but I also know that you speak about improv and you I do about play and i think that there there has to be given credit for if other people in the world in the community are looking to you as a leader that makes you a professional in it Touché. and that's why we have dr marcy on the show <laughs> um and getting to the to the one point that i was making as far as uh improvisation i have learned um and there is a f number of improv tenants uh but one particular that if you've heard of the practice, practice of improvisation, uh, whether it be comedic improv or jazz improv, um, you know, we say yes and. Yes and essentially means um, accept I reality. That from you. Aww. Oh, thank you, Dr. Mercy. And that just means accept the reality and build. Yes and. Um, on stage, it means that when our partner, uh, you know, throws out an offer, uh, we don't deny them and say no. We accept it and we, we build on it. And it's interesting. So I was speaking at an event. Uh, it was uh, my really good friends, uh, Mark and Angel, Angel Chernoff. Um, you know, they have a really cool site, uh, Mark and Angel Hack Life. They have a really cool in-person event um, called Think Better, Live Better. And I was really bummed uh, that I didn't get a chance to be there this year. I think in the last couple of years, this is the first year that I've missed in a while. But nonetheless, I was speaking at this event and I just gave this parent this one tip. And then when I saw them the next year, her eyes lit up. So basically, you know, she came up afterwards and she's like, you're talking about play. And my my kids, they call dad the fun dad. And I'm just mom. And I was like, you know, and, and I hear that a lot. And so I said, well, why don't you just take, uh, you know, something uh, that I learned from improv 
and just yes and your kids. And maybe you can have a yes and day where, you know, if they make an offer for a full day, you will accept that offer and build on it. She's like, uh, I, I can do that. I was like, yeah, you can do that. Um, and so, so a year goes by and she comes back and she's like, oh my God, Gary, I'm the fun mom now. And I was like, tell me more. And so she said, at the end of the day, all her kids wanted to do was to spend time uh, with her. And uh, one day she's like, all right, I'm going to just accept uh, what they want to do and see what happens. And they like, it was something for dinner where they like, she's like, what do you want to do for dinner? And then the kids said, I forgot what it was, but it was the fact that she didn't just say no. She's like, all right, cool, let's do this. And then um, the other thing was the kids wanted to go um, to the park and, you know, they play sports, they play soccer. And normally dad's the one that does it. Well, he wasn't there then. And so she did it and she didn't have to be good at it. It was the fact that she right. accepted and she billed and the kids loved it. And so mm -hmm. that is my invite for all of you parents watching. We were like, I don't know what the hell to do with my kids. What if you don't have to know? They know. The kids, like, know. kids have so many ideas in their head. You just have to be willing to do it. Right. So I, Gary, I love this idea of a yes and day. So if I can just kind of add my parenting Please. to that, especially in these like times of quarantine and crisis of name the day, right? So I'm a big fan of if you need a day in your pajamas where you just watch TV all day, call it a movie day, call it a pajama day, do a yes and day, like name it, right? You put a title on it. You're like, we're having a yes and day so you can experience and play with it. It also means that other days when you're like, I have to get my work done. And I have to get, you know, your schoolwork done and you can't yes and everything. You say, ah, today's a school day or today is a work day or today is a, you know, on Mondays, we always have to do our schedule and you can have moments of yes and. But if you name the day and they know what that experience means and they can connect to the label, then you can say, ah, oh, we're going to have a yes and hour tonight after we get everything done. We're going to have a yes and afternoon, but right now we have work time, right? So if you start labeling the types of days or the portion of days, your kids can know what to expect when you talk about it. They can also ask for it and you can plan for it. So yes. you can have all of the experiences and get everything done. Heck yeah. And one of the favorite, uh, I feel like quarantine... Uh, so in improv, we have this game called Unfortunately, Fortunately. So it's a way to just sort of see things from um, both sides. Uh, so it's unfortunate that we're having um, to be at home um, more than we would like to. But fortunately, it's it's uh, inviting us to be creative. And a friend of mine, uh, Judy Holla, if you're seeing this, what's up, Holla? Um, she wrote an amazing book uh, about becoming a fear boss. Um, you know, it's called Fear is My Homeboy, an amazing book. It's pink. You cannot miss it. Uh, I see it every time I go on a trip when it was okay to go on a trip. I would be in the airport bookstore, and I can spot her book from a mile away. She is an amazing person, uh, also an improviser. Um, and she, one of the things that she learned from quarantine that she's going to stick that's going to stick with her after quarantine is takeout Tuesdays and they get takeout from a local restaurant. So again, on that whole theme of name the day. Right. Well, there's a, there's a, a phrase, a joke of how do you, how do you make your dog, your dog, you I name mean, it and you teach it to come to its name. Right. <laughs> like there's this whole idea that like, if, if you're, if you are teaching, right. And, and we know, pet training is a thing like you name it and you teach it to respond to its name. That same concept works here. If you just like are like, well, we're just going to order out your kids. Then every night are asking, can we order it tonight? Can we order it tonight? How about now? Right. It's like a dog that just kind of like runs around wild. But if you say, Hey, we have takeout Tuesday, then your kids go, Oh, is today the takeout day? And you're like, no, when do we take out on Tuesdays? And they're like, right. So they said that like, my, my kids keep asking me questions all freaking day long about all sorts of things they already know the answer to, and it's driving you a little bit batty. Name it, teach them the rule, and then here's, here's the magic. Here's the magic of being a parent and having a name. If it is Friday and you don't want to cook, 
or you know a restaurant in your neighborhood that really needs the business right now because so many local restaurants really do. And you're like, dude, we're ordering out tonight. It's Friday, not Tuesday. We can't. How do we do this? You go, hey, y'all, I have a wacky idea. It's going to be takeout Tuesday on Friday. And then all yes. of a sudden you think you're super fun. You still maintain the name of it. You still maintain the order and semblance. And you get to have takeout on Friday. So, so it doesn't mean that just <laughs> make a rule. You have you are then stuck in that structure. So many like this is one of the things that that I think people really get stuck on. If I make the schedule, if I make the routine, if I make the rule, then then I have to stick to it. No, no, no. You can break it. You just need to name that you're breaking it. You need to acknowledge that this is different. So when you name the different parts of your day or the different kinds of days, then you can reference it and talk about it. That transparency and openness makes all the difference. So you can have huge, amazing, out of control play. Just name those times. I think sometimes parents get concerned of like, if, if I get my kids riled up, right? Like Gary, you've talked about that your son loves rough and tumble play. Yeah. And some parents are like, but if, but if I rile them up, especially when we can't then go run around outside, right? Being in New York City, many of us can't right now. What am I going to do? Well, then you name it. We're going to have rough and tumble play for 20 minutes and set a timer. And when the timer goes off, know that your kids aren't going to turn on a dime. But that's when you start to pace down. Name it. Funny Sorry. story. Funny story, Dr. Marcy. Uh, so we've been uh, time boxing things for Garrett. And it has gotten so much so that when Garrett's a little negotiator, like this little dude, like I'm like, ah, man, you're so freaking smart. Like, I, uh, I get you. He's like, he, he he does this. Like, he wants it to be his idea. He's like, da da. So I have an idea. We asked Siri for five minutes. And then... <laughs> And then we do it. Is that a good idea? And I'm like, all right, you know, I, I can't, again, yes, Andy, and I was like, I can't argue with that. I'm like, all right, yes, we will fight for five minutes. And and then uh, Sarah doesn't recognize his voice yet, so I have to, like, help him out. Uh, but he's like, he's like, Dada, tell Siri five minutes. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing, too, right, of we get stuck and then our kids come up with a brilliant idea. And we're like, no, we can't do that. Yes. I mean, right now, I am a big fan of saying yes more because the idea of having harmony in your home is more important than any schedule, than any lesson, than any conference call, than any anything. Yes. And one of the things that kind of really struck me is that we are in the middle of a, of a historical moment, right? I mean, it's not very often that you get to sit in time and go, oh, there's this is going to go in history books. This is going to be this is going to be something our kids remember for the rest of their lives. Like this is going to be a moment we remember for the rest of their lives. So really take stock of that and say, what do you, what do you want your kids to remember? What do you want 20 years from now when they're sitting with their friends talking about, you remember that year when the world stopped and schools closed and you were with your family? What was that like for you? What do you want your kids to remember from that? Yeah. Everything else can get worked out, right? They'll catch up on the academic learning. They'll reconnect. The social skills will come back with their friends. Like all of the things that you're worried about. But what do you want them to remember? Yes. yes. I don't have kids myself, but I want to remember this time that I had fun, that I talked to people daily that I loved, that I laughed, and that I made a difference. Yes. What do you want for your family? And then go put that in place. And if it is play, then get on the floor and play with your kids and use yes and and hang out with us more because this is super fun. Right? Yeah, exactly. And so if you have questions, put them in the comments. Uh, I'm doing my best to like sort of multitask and keep keep track of everything. Uh, my girl, Stephanie Liu is on. What's up, Stephanie? Uh, Stephanie Liu like, is amazing. Like pre-quarantine, um, one of the things that I loved about Stephanie is, so she's a freelancer. She does social media. Um, so she... Um, you know, she has her own business, so she worked from home, and she did exactly what um, you were talking about, Dr. Marcy, is that she had a day, and it was Wednesdays, and so she has a uh, a beautiful little girl, Emma, oh my gosh, uh, Emma's gonna be a heartbreaker, I'm just, I'm just saying this out loud, I'm just, she is, she is sassy, uh, she's so cute, and she's super yeah. intelligent, like, she has, like, all of the, everything working for her, nonetheless, Wednesdays was uh, Stephanie and Emma day, like, that, 
You know, yeah. she she designed her life so that on Wednesdays it can just be Mama Daughter Day, and they would go do stuff, and that would be you know clients knew about it. Um, I I knew, but I'm like, and then I would go to tag them like, oh, it's Wednesdays, you know, and it was really cool because to your point, you know, uh, you can just sort of oh. No, that's going to happen on Wednesday. Oh, that's going to happen on Wednesday. Like, I, mm -hmm. it's super, super intelligent. And um, the work of um, Sean Acor, he says, like, as far as happiness is if we have something that we're looking forward to, we're usually more happier than the actual thing itself. So I got all excited because it's one of the... <laughs> This is I'm me doing my holding this. my excitement in. I'm not always very patient. I love it. I excited actively. Go. <laughs> pre quarantine, I love that you use pre quarantine. I would talk to parents about having um, special nights with their kids one on one time, right? Like one parent, one child. If you have multiple kids, you need to have multiple times. It can be a 30 minute block, doesn't matter. But they need to know because, and, and Gary, you said this before of I'm pointing this way because. That's where you are on my screen, it's but you're actually that way. So yeah, you've right. said this before of, you know, most of what's happening is attention, right? Your kids just want to be around you. And I've talked to a handful of parents since we've been quarantined. And I'm like, your kids just want time with you. You need to keep going on, on that quality time with them. You need to keep setting dates with them. And actually, you probably need to do it twice a week now instead of just once a week. And they're like, hold up. I got 24 hours, seven days a week with my kids. And you are telling me that I need to set date night with my kid now too. And I'm like, oh yeah, because it's totally different. The random, like it's seven o'clock and we don't know what to do. So we all end up on the couch watching a movie and making popcorn is very different mentally and emotionally than Thursday night. We're watching a movie and we're having popcorn can be the exact same action. The, the behavior can be exactly the same but the feelings of it are different. The way we look forward to it creates a sense of connectivity. The way we can look, reflect and look back on it creates a different memory. And so, yeah, keep planning those things. Like I'm really hoping that Stephanie is still doing her Wednesday days, right? Yeah, right. Even while we're in quarantine and it might look different. It might be a, a mama, a mama daughter afternoon or a mom and daughter hour because life is different now. But maintaining that even in this state is so important because your kids still want that plan. It's sort of like, you know, if, if you're a couple right now and you're home still planning out date night with your significant other, or if you are virtual and doing it virtually, like that is needed right now because you need that quality time where you're like, I'm going to put the phone away and we're going to have a glass of wine together, or we're going to have a lovely meal together, or we're going to have an intentional conversation that does not include you know, all of the day-to-day -day business of life so that we can stay connected. Like that is critical right now. And it feels very different than when you happen to grab 10 minutes together and have like that quiet, like, oh my gosh, I miss having like time together than when you plan it. it feels yeah. different. And I love how you mentioned it could still be the same thing, but you put a label on it. And one other thing, uh, as we were talking, I was like, ah. Uh, my mom is a genius because when you were saying, oh, we just did it on this day, but we'll call it this. There will be times, again, I grew up in the 80s. There'll be times where she's like, we're like, what are we having for dinner? She's like, we're having breakfast. I'm like, breakfast for dinner? Right. <laughs> yes. And it was like a big deal. Like it literally was a big deal. We were like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Like, and as a parent now, like I'm like, I get it. I get yeah. it. She's like, I don't know what to feed you. Look, there's a box of cereal and some milk and milk. Right? Right? Breakfast for dinner. Like, yeah. Her sanity. And you were super excited. Like, if we can do that, hashtag winning as parents. Okay. Heck. To be clear, I'm not actually a parent. I just hang out with lots and lots of kids. I know. Um, but so, Gary, as you said that your mom was a genius, I just want you to know and to reiterate in case you've gotten confused in any way, shape, or form, my mom currently knows that you're a genius. So, I mean, just know that, that whatever your mom did has been passed on to you. Um, my mom and it has, you know, like 20 followers on Instagram and Gary is one of them and she follows him. And I hear every time Gary likes one of her pictures, every time Gary posts something, I hear about it. 
it is like you are a celebrity of celebrities of celebrities in my parents' house. I just I want to reiterate and make sure that you know how deeply beloved you are by the Beagle family. Yes. Uh, well, I'm a big fan of clowns, so I mean, uh, so so it's a win win. I'm like when I heard your parents were when I heard that uh, your parents were clowns, I was like, all the other uh, accolades that you had, like that's cool. Like I I like, <laughs> I, I love it, but I'm like. You have clown parents. Like, this is, like, amazing. And talk about, like, easy to impress. Uh, fun fun story. Uh, Dr. Marcy, she was in town, and she we met up for lunch, and she gave me a little squeaker from her mom uh, <laughs> that her mom, like, has a bunch of them. But the fact that it came from her mom, like, is, like, the coolest gift ever. And it is nothing fancy. Like, it's the squeaker that you find in dog toys but it's the coolest thing ever and um i so what she does with it and again this is one of the things just get getting creative like it doesn't have to be super super fancy uh to have an impact um she like would go around and like you know like touch people and squeak it like it's it's cool it's, you can discreetly put so, it away. um i'm not sure if i'm allowed to disclose clown secrets but i'm going to so i'm sorry if my parents are watching i am very sorry and if I'm disclosing things I shouldn't, I am very sorry. But it is for the sake of parents learning how to play and making it simple. So yes. please, and and your and cousin, that's your cousin, right, James? You can't really browse her parents until you meet in a restaurant with them. Yeah, that's James. That's my cousin. Yep, it's very true. It is a um, it is an amazing experience to eat in a restaurant with my parents, even when they're in their street clothes. Um, but what my parents will often do uh, after a clown gig is they're hungry, so they go out to eat. So you, I have had many meals with my parents in clown at a restaurant, not where they had a gig, but we just went to dinner. And the reason you don't normally see that is because most clowns after an event go home. Like most clowns don't like <laughs> roam around in it. Um, but my parents do because sometimes my dad can't remember if he's dressed in clowns or just, you know, being entertaining on the street. So yeah, it's uh my family is, is definitely an adventure. And James, I am so delighted that you were here. Um, but so clowns often will give out stickers. So my mom will give out stickers, and when she puts it on you, she will squeak it and she will use the squeaker that Gary is talking about, but it will be hidden. So it's not like she's like squeak and makes it. She like does it very kind of coyly. So many people think that the sticker itself is squeaking. And I will tell you, the children will spend 20 minutes trying to figure out why they can't make their, their sticker squeak. <clears throat> My mom will tell them that she has a magic finger. And just this will go on and on and on and on. And I point this out not to disclose secrets that maybe I'm not supposed to be sharing, but most adults can figure this out. <laughs> I do have one friend who is a lawyer and it took her a half hour. And then we finally told her how my mom made it squeak. So, you know, but most adults can figure it out is that Kids don't need a whole big dog and pony show to be entertained. They need something small and they need you to engage with them and be willing to do it. That's it. We're losing Gary. Just me now. So we can, we can tell about all of the Gary secrets now. I wonder what's happening in his house, right? But so it really is about something small and engaging. And it's more about you being present with your kids, AKA, Take a half hour and be like, I'm gonna put my phone down. I'm gonna put a note. I'm gonna let people at work know that I'm away. I'm gonna really just sit here on the floor and play with my kids. And I do say on the floor because as many adults, when I see parents playing with their kids, it's one of the things that in my private practice I talk a lot with about parents of like, when you set up your kids to play, them being on the floor and you sitting on the couch isn't you playing with them. That's you watching them play. And you actually getting up and going and sitting next to them and picking up the materials and doing something with them, that's you playing with them. And it's a, it feels like a minor shift, but it changes the entire dynamic. And what your kids want is for you to sit on the floor and be engaged with the materials with them, right? Oh, oh, to that point, to that point. So let me drop something on you. Um, in the science of play, um, yes. we have a signal. So uh, you can see it in dogs. It's called a play bow. It's a, it's an invite to play. And when you get that sort of play bow, dogs will do it. Like dogs and other animals, they have a signal. And that means, please play with me. And in order to engage in the act of play, you have to join the play 
area. And so as a parent, uh, that is a, in the world of improvisation, that's a denial when you get that invite to play and you're like, oh, I'm all right, cool. I'm going to play with you, but you're going to play in the play area and I'm going out, not really playing. And so if you get the invite to play, um, you need to, you need to step up. And uh, I got this, like, it was, you know, like you get the message at the right time. Uh, it was right before Garrett was born. And one of my uh, play advocates, um, uh, Kevin Curl, um, he is the guy that has the red ball and everything that he does. Um, and he used to work uh, for Nike. Uh, I heard him on a podcast and he, and he was talking about the play, uh, the play bow and the invite to play. And he said, Is it a literal bow? Well, uh, dogs would do it. Like when you see dogs, like sort of get down, like it is the invite to play. And that's the signal to the other dog. Like, hey, we're going to play. And so they what do you will do, do as a human. What's the human signal? Well, see, that's the thing. Kids will come up and it's, and it's usually the tug, <laughs> the tug of the shirt sort of thing. And so, so you can look it up. Yeah, yeah. You have to pick up the signals. And so going back to Kevin, he was saying that kids are going to have that invite to play and they want to be seen they want to play with you but if you do not reciprocate if you do not start to engage and play that will go away and they will stop inviting you to play and i heard that right before garrett was born and i was like all right this is going to be useful one day i remember that put a wrinkle in your brain garrett this is important and it is so true because garrett will come up and he will want to play and it will be the most ridiculous things and i was like kevin said if it, it, it like it like it almost like haunted me. He's like, if I don't if I don't accept the invite, he's gonna stop inviting me to play, and I don't want it. Like I was thinking of the day like when my son was like, going to do it. And he's like, no, and I'm yeah. like, you know, and I'm not even paying attention. And he's like, so like that has been the thing. Uh, and then, but thinking about the science of play and how play works, the reason why play is so fascinating and magical things happen is because play is this paradox where things are real and not real at the same time and you have to step into the playground you have to one be invited that's why play is so sacred is that it is something that you can't be forced into it like you have to want you like you have to accept the invite to play and when you're in the playground magic happens so like as a parent yeah, sit on the floor. And the other thing that Dr. Marcy talked about, like, it's so small. Uh, these stars, like, I swear, these stars are, like, the thing. Um, where, um, you know, when we were kids, we got the gold stars. And so, like, I just go and I give Garrett, I'm like, you're, you're awesome. And it's so funny, a friend of mine, an adult, um, she, she did something really cool for me. Uh, and I felt special, so I sent her a gift. And I said, you get a gold star. Thank you, Taylene. You get a gold star. Thank you. And she, like, literally replied back almost instantly. It was like, oh, my God, that made my day. And so it was, like, the smallest things that can have an impact on our emotions and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. my mom still talks about giving out gold stars. Like, I'll do something. She'll be like, you get a gold star. But along those lines, my parents give stickers out all the time to everybody. And there are certain stores that they have been to where it's, you know, the cashier they give a sticker to. And three years later, they'll show back up and that cashier will still have the sticker on the cash register. And they'll be like, oh, I love that you gave me that sticker. Like we as adults are desperate to play and have permission to play. Right. And um, Gary, you give out permission slips. Let's see. Do I have? Because it is so important for you to recognize that you have it. And I don't know if you saw me, Gary, but as you yeah. were talking about the behavior of play and the invitation to play, like I was over here being all excited because it's right in line with how behaviors work, right? Yes. Behaviors stick around if they work. If they don't work, they go away, which is just a good concept to understand as a parent and what's happening in your house. But when it comes to play, the fact that your kids are inviting you and you, you are, you want to play, you want to have fun, you don't want life to be so serious and you just don't know how. You just have to say yes and take those moments and let them lead you because they'll show you, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things as you were talking that I was wondering about is one of the things that I talk about is letting, is, is actually creating language around behavior, right? So some kids will come over and learn like, if they push another kid, they get the toy. We don't want that push to be it, but we want them to use their words. So in your house, 
is there a way, and you, not you, Gary, but you person listening on the other side of this camera who I don't actually know your particular name, but I know you, right? Can you create a signal in your house for your kids to actually invite you play? Make it be a sign, right? Like the sign for more. So that when you sit down with the kids, you know, I actually off the top of my head right now, I don't know. I know like book and I know music. The fact that I don't know sign language for play is a problem. I'm going to go find it out. Yes. More play. Is this play? No, that's like all done. I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm right. just doing, I'm right. doing all the five signals that I know. I'm like, right. <laughs> but can you even make up a signal with your family and say, this is the sign for play. And so that when your kid, cause like the pulling on your shirt, your kids do it for play. They right. do it because they're hungry. They do it because they're thirsty. They're doing because you haven't talked to them in long enough. So as a parent, you can read their mind and discern it. But in this moment, I wonder if you can make a sign that's like, play, right? Like make it up with them, have it be something silly. And so that you can be like, yes, let's play. Or like, we can play in five minutes. Or so that you can outwardly have this signal as a family. I've talked a lot with, with um, people about creating routines in your home while we're quarantined. Because when we go to school, there are routines around that. When we go to work, there's a routine around that. When we clean up, there's a routine around that. We need routines right now to keep us in the flow of what's happening in our lives when we're all in our homes. Can you make a routine around play, AKA a signal, a signifier, a way for your kids to ask and a way that you're gonna say yes to? Because we need to say yes to play. Yes. Or as Gary said, they're gonna stop asking. And then you get to have less fun and they get to have less fun. And you know what happens when nobody's having fun? Everyone gets cranky and everyone starts fighting and everybody's in a cranky place. And there's too much crankiness happening right now. So we need to play more. Yes. Did and, you find your permission slip? Uh, no, I, I think I gave the last one away. Because uh, I was like, <laughs> I had one that I used to show a camera. Uh, Garrett takes them. He loves them. So. Uh, I mean, they're amazing. But were, if you need one, like Garrett, Garrett will them. write you permission slips and we'll send it to you. Just let us know. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back in the comments. I have a digital version that you can download. So if you need permission uh, Marcy's a doctor. She's she's saying that this is a verified thing. Uh, then you can show it to your boss. It's all good. Uh, yeah. We all need to play. And this yeah. is one of the things, like dropping some science knowledge on play, is that um, if you want to, so we have the serious part of ourselves, and then we have the like sort of let go part. You know, the part that's going to rejuvenate us, and they don't coexist unfortunately at the same time so like when you're like in that hunter gather mode like you know and you're starting to be stressed out like the play part is there but it, you need to activate it and so i love what you were talking about dr marcy of having signals having triggers that when you're getting too stressed boom you can activate that because that is the benefit of play is that it makes you less stress it it activates the parasympathetic uh part of your of your nervous system. nervous system so that you can rejuvenate so that you can think rationally about what's going on and would you all agree that we need to keep our immunities up right now uh down so that our bodies can be healthier right did i say yeah yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm agreeing yeah, I was like, did I do it the wrong way? Uh, anyways, but yeah, so that's the thing. Play is an easy thing, and it doesn't have to be, like, a long thing. I love how you're like, five minutes. Five minutes, we get to play, and we get to play for five minutes. That's it. Yeah, yeah. In and out, right? It's a great break. Um, schools have, you know, like, 45-minute periods or 30-minute periods or, you know, 75-minute periods. And then kids actually get up and move and come back and do more work. And yet, right now, while we're doing homeschooling, there are kids who are sitting for, like, four hours straight on the computer doing their Zoom lessons. And it's not okay. Like it's it's not helping their brain function. It's not helping them learn. It's not helping them feel good. It's not helping you feel good. Like it's making things kerfuffly, even though in the moment you're like, oh, four hours, I can get some work done. That's called but recess. Every hour or every half hour, depending on the age of your child, you took a five minute play break. Oh my gosh, it would change everything. Everything. And this is this is information that I learned from you, Gary. So maybe you can do the, maybe you know the exact numbers better than I do off the top of my head, but you shared, right? I have to go that, yeah, that right. way. From you, I believe that you taught me that it's 30 to 40 repetitions of learning something new is, is how long it takes if you're doing it in a playful way. If you are learning through play, you need to do it 30 to 40 times. If you are learning in a serious strategic study mode, 
you actually need to repeat it 200 to 300 times. And just think about that difference. So when your kids are sitting there, I am going to learn for so many hours, they are in that serious mode. It's going to take them 200 to 300 times to create the neural pathways to learn something. Whereas if they've just played and they're in that playful space, even if they're like sitting and focused and learning, it's going to take them 30 to 40 repetitions. Like, hello. That to me is a no brainer as far as what, how I want to spend my time and what I want to do around education and learning because I want to do something 30 to 40 times, not hundreds of times and get it. So just something to think about. Something yes. to consider. Right. Was that the right numbers? Did I remember that correctly? You're spot on, spot on. So yes, right? I know, right? There. Uh, uh. <laughs> We're gonna this, play. Is this is a fun game. Play the right direction. We are retraining our brain right now. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, there we go, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, but no, you you were spot on. Um, and for all of you parents, whether you're watching live or the replay, um, or you know, aunts, uncles, you know, we're all kids mm-hmm. at heart. Uh, oh, here we go. James, I love your cousin. Uh, totally knew of people who were forcing their kids to learn for four hours straight. Love it. Kids will catch up academically. Yes. Can can we just say that again? Like. Yes. Our, our kids are smart. We are brilliant. Let's face it, as adults, we are still learning. Learning that cognitive academic content will happen. It yeah. will happen. If your kids are little and you're worried about them learning the ABCs, they can get that six months from now. That's going to be fine. If they're in middle school or high school and it's like deep, important history or big literature, they're going to learn that. They can get there. We can do that in six months from now. But right now, with the way that the world is, I don't want to learn anything. Like, I'm like, somebody was talking to me last night about a documentary, and I was like, I don't care. I can't. I can't take it in. The the uncertainty of the world, the stress of what's happening. Oh, my gosh, that's hysterical, Gary. Thank you. Um, all of the contingencies that are going on around us is it's impacting the way our brains are functioning, the way our bodies are functioning, the way our emotions are being navigated. And it is actually harder to learn right now because we don't know what's happening. I'm not a person who usually at two or three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, I am done. And there have been many days since we have all gone home that at like three o'clock, I'm like, I need a break. I'm like, Netflix, thank you. Now, granted, some days I then, you know, at five or six, I'm like, okay. I can come back in, but that fatigue is real. That's not me being lazy. Granted, I had to learn that. That's not me checking out. That is the the world circumstances, the elements that we are navigating, being in our homes by ourselves, you as a parent, teaching, working, parenting, being a human, navigating how much news do I want versus not is all impacting how we're learning. And your kids are having that too, even if they are protected from the cognitive knowledge, right? They can feel what's happening. So no, please do not have your kids sit down at their desk for four hours at a time and learn. They will get the academic knowledge they learn. If them learning in school is a good distraction for them, if it is helping them, absolutely. Like I am a big fan of having routines, having structure, keeping it going. But four hours sitting in one chair is not good for any human. We're not built to do that. Your kids are not doing that in school. And especially virtually, it's a whole different thing. So James, yes, thank you for pointing that out. I'm really glad that we can reiterate it. The most important thing for your kids to know right now is that they are safe and is that they are loved. Yep. And I think Gary and I would both throw in that they are having fun with you. Yes. It's gonna change the entire experience because play is the way for them to feel safe and loved. Just telling them, maybe not. Giving them lots of hugs, brilliant plan. Yeah. But if you sit down and play and are connected with them, that's how they're going to feel safe and loved. And that connection will come through your play. Agreed. Yeah. How can you make it fun? How can you gamify it? And I'm going to leave with one thing because we're at time. And then um, I'm having so much fun with you. I I know. This is a book that I've been loving right now. Uh, Becoming uh, Better Grown Ups by Brad Montague. It's an amazing book. And one thing I want to, like, as you can see, like, I have, like, so many, like, this is just freaking awesome. But one thing that Brad did when he was on these listening tour uh, is that he uh, brought a map. 
like a treasure map. And it's a great way to check in to find out where the kids are. Um, and here is a version of the map. Treasure map. And you could see like some of the different places on the map. So fun. Um, and so if you didn't see that, you know, some of the places were Wonder Mountain, uh, you know, the Mines of Hustle. Uh, we think we need to spend a lot of time in there trying to find those like diamonds. But, you know, the reality is we need to be at the campfire. But uh, nonetheless, then the kids helped him expand this map. What'd they add? Oh, they added it's rainbows to the wonder. Wonder. And then look, there's a, a, a narwhal on there. I feel like uh, they added color. Yeah. And a good place to cry is over here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. A, a good place to cry. Like kids get it. reason why I'm bringing up the map is that. It's important to check in and find out, like, check in for yourself. Like, where are you? <laughs> where are? Let's, let's realign our compass and figure out based on what where we are. Let let's be a good wayfinder and then give ourselves what we need. Um, and this is a different, you know, environment than we're used to. We need to give ourselves grace. And um, if we could do it playfully, when we look back on this, because we're gonna get through it. Let's let's be. It. We're gonna get through it. And when we look back on it, to say, you know what, it was. Like, cray-cray, what was going on? But we did it together. We did it as a family. We did it playfully. And even though there were moments where we were scared or nervous, we were able to redirect that energy in a playful way. The kids are going to love it. So, uh, Dr. Marcy, thank you so much for being on with me. This has been such a delight. Uh, and for all of you watching... Thank you. And now, Dr. Mercy, the floor is yours. Tell us how we can stay in touch with you. Um, I know you are on a streak with your lives, which are coming up pretty soon. So um, the floor is yours. Um, thank you. Um, so, part. ooh, now it's all me. I like, look at that. So part of why we are hopping off is because in five minutes, I am going live. I have been going live every day. Um, today is day 40. So every day since I have been home talking to parents with uh, a tool and a tip, of how to get through, what to do in your home, how to navigate things with your kids. We start out with a gratitude practice of either what's working for you, if that's how you're feeling, or you know what are you grateful for today? And then we go into the tip. It's usually about 15 minutes. It's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram, all at Dr. Marcy Beagle. I post it to LinkedIn, but I don't have LinkedIn Live yet. This is my first LinkedIn Live. So please come join me for that. It is a good time. My cousin James is off in there. Um, and then I also have a self-care sheet at drmarcy.com backslash self-care. Uh, and it's it's just a one pager with 10 tips of things that you can do to help you kind of stay grounded and solid and uh, get through the day. It's sometimes the simplest things that are the most impactful right now. So keep doing this. Gary, it has been so fun being here with you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to put all those links uh, in the description and, and in, in the comments so that you have them because uh, Dr. Marcy is, is amazing. So. As are you. And I, when we started, I shared this feed everywhere. Um, but I will put it up on my YouTube channel. If there is a file you can send me. Yes. So well. We can share it there too. But yes. um, Gary, you are amazing. I love all that you're bringing to the world. Um, I love how excited my parents get about you. It's so great. Um, and just know that energy is out there in the world for you. And you who are out there listening, thank you for being with us. James, thank you for all of your comments yes. and being here full time. Yes. And um, have a fun, fun, fun Saturday. Yes. All right, everyone. See you next time. Go out and play.